Hey gang, Jack Allaire here, just with a review of Batman Arkham Asylum, a game that came out in 2009. I picked this game up on Steam during the summer sale, and because I missed out on it back in 2009 when it originally came out. And I played it on the PC, and while I did play through it on mouse and keyboard, it is definitely meant for a controller. The main thing that Arkham Asylum was noted for was the combat, and having played it, I can see why. This group of thugs would be very hard to take out without the use of the counter system that they have built in. These guys will gang up on Batman pretty fast, and until you learn the rhythm of the fighting system, which I had not at this point, you're going to die many, many times. Don't let him hit you, you idiot! You'll notice that one of the bad guys has an electric stick. This means I have to jump over him to attack from behind, or else I'll end up getting zapped by him. You may also notice that every time I knock an enemy down, it goes into a short slow motion scene that allows you to line up so that you can take on the next guy and keep the combo going longer and longer. Straight up fighting works on most of the bad guys, but eventually they get smart and start carrying guns. This is where you need to employ a little bit of stealth and become a lot sneakier or they will blow your face off. This room has five armed guys in it, and I had to try and take them out one by one. The first guy was easy, I could just sneak up on him and take him down. But Joker's put collars on most of his goons, so that when I take them down, the collar starts laughing, which then brings the other baddies to investigate. Now Batman is cool on his own, but he becomes the coolest guy in the room when he starts pulling out the gadgets. Find him, or we're next to him, Batman! This gadget is the Sonic Batarang. And what it does is it mimics the caller's noises and gets the other guys to walk over and look at it. And then you can blow them up. The great thing about even these stealth areas is that when you mess up, like I just did right there and allowed people to see me, if you move quickly from place to place, you can lose them and they simply stop shooting at you. Down to just two guys. We finish one off with an inverted takedown, and then we're going to end off the other with a very simple glide kick. By defeating all of the enemies in the area, we gain experience as well as some of our health back. Batman gets health by beating people up. This may explain why he's still single. You spend experience points to upgrade uh, different things along in the game. When you can upgrade something, it brings you to this menu. And then you can upgrade either fighting, gadgets, or health as you'd like. Now the game would be awesome if it stopped there, but oh no. There are also collectibles, and the collectibles fit into the world, even if they're placed a little weird. Uh, and as a bonus, you get experience points on top of that for collecting these things. First off, let's talk about these things, interview tapes. You find them all over the place, and they give insight into the villains that you're fighting. In this same spot, you can also read up on the cast of characters. It has everything from 
uh, story about them, facts about them, as well as some of the attributes that they exhibit, being supervillains and all. Most of the villains that you learn about are only referenced in the game. Things like Mr. Freeze and a few others. These collectibles are the Chronicles of Arkham, and they give an insight into the mind of the person who built Arkham Asylum. And what a wild ride it is. But the main challenges come from the Riddler himself. He has placed trophies all over the place. This one was actually easy to find, but I had to wait until I got the right tool to be able to get at it. As a bonus in here, we find a Riddler map. What this does is it gives us locations, sort of, of all of the collectibles, as well as some of the Riddler challenge locations. The Riddler challenges vary by location, and in each area there's usually a riddle that you have to solve. One for instance, this one references a mad dog, so we must search until we find the reference there. This one was easy to find, it was just kind of along the walkway. But the subject was too small, so I did have to zoom in before I finally got it. Challenges are just mini-games, uh, so that you can test your skills and get a faster time, higher score. But by far the coolest thing that I found is the trophies. The statues depict the villains, heroes, and even the vehicles of the game, so that you can take a good look at the detail that went into the character design. Each and every one of them looks simply amazing. They're all rendered in 3D, and they look beautiful just as they appear in the game. I would love to have some trophies in real life, because they look very cool, and it would be very nice to just have Gordon and Bane and everybody in little statues about, about 12 inches tall, maybe, and just go from there and have them sitting on my desk. This is just an amazing game that if you haven't had the chance to pick up, go ahead and give it a try. The combat is amazing, the writing is well thought out, the sense of place is done very well, and the level of detail is just amazing. My only criticism would be two things. One is the annoying flash that happens whenever you go in and out of detective mode. I found it a little jarring while I was playing it with no lights on. And the other thing is that this is definitely made for a controller. While I made it through with mouse and keyboard, there are some parts where it is just broken trying to do combat. Specifically in the points where it goes to a fixed camera and Batman won't move quite as easily as he normally does. So, there you have it. Uh, Batman Arkham Asylum gets two bananas and an apple from me. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and play on!